We're given the function f of x equals three times two raised to the power of x plus one, and we're asked to determine the following function values. The first function value is f of negative two. To determine this function value, we substitute negative two for x. f of negative two equals three times two raised to the power of negative two plus one. Negative two plus one equals negative one. This simplifies to three times two raised to the power of negative one. Two raised to the power of negative one is equal to one over two raised to the power of positive one, or one half. This simplifies to three times one half, which equals three halves. Three halves as a decimal equals 1.5. F of negative two equals 1.5. The next function value is f of negative one, so we substitute negative one for x. f of negative one equals three times two raised to the power of negative one plus one. Negative one plus one equals zero. This simplifies to three times two raised to the power of zero. Any non-zero value raised to the power of zero equals one. This simplifies to three times one, which equals three. F of negative one equals three. The next function value is f of zero, and therefore we substitute zero for x. f of zero equals three times two raised to the power of zero plus one. Zero plus one equals one. This simplifies to three times two raised to the power of one or two to the first, which equals three times two, which equals six. The next function value is f of one. To determine the function value, we substitute one for x. f of one equals three times two raised to the power of one plus one. One plus one equals two. This simplifies to three times two raised to the second power, or two squared, which equals three times four, which equals 12. f of one equals 12. The last function value is f of two, and therefore we substitute two for x. f of two equals three times two, raised to the power of two plus one. Two plus one equals three. This simplifies to three times two, raised to the third power, or two cubed. Two cubed is equal to eight. This simplifies to three times eight, which equals 24. f of two equals 24. Now that we have the function values, we are asked to use these function values to graph the function f of x. Every function value represents an ordered pair, and each ordered pair represents a point on the graph of the function. So now we'll use these function values, state the corresponding ordered pairs, and then plot the points on the graph. So the function value f of negative two equals 1.5 corresponds to the ordered pair negative two comma 1.5. Every ordered pair is in the form of the input comma the output, or in this case, x comma f of x. f of negative one equals three corresponds to the ordered pair negative one comma three. f of zero equals six corresponds to the ordered pair zero comma six. f of one equals 12 corresponds to the ordered pair one comma 12. And finally, f of two equals 24 corresponds to the ordered pair two comma 24. And now we will plot these five points on the coordinate plane and graph the function. Starting at the origin, for the ordered pair negative two comma 1.5, we move left two units and then up 1.5 units. Notice how the vertical axis is scaled by twos, so up 1.5 would be approximately here. The next ordered pair is negative one comma three. From the origin, left one, up three. The next ordered pair, zero comma six from the origin. We only move up six. The next ordered pair is one comma 12 from the origin, right one up 12. The last ordered pair is two comma 24 from the origin, right two up 24. Before we graph the function passing through these five points, it's important to recognize that two raised to the power of x plus one is going to approach zero as x decreases It'll never reach zero, and it will also never be negative, which means the graph is going to approach the horizontal axis, but never touch or intersect the horizontal axis. And therefore, the graph will look something like this. Now that we have the graph, let's finish by giving the domain and range of the exponential function. The domain is a set of all possible inputs, or in this case, the set of all possible x values. And because x can be any real number for the exponential function, the domain is going to be the open interval from negative infinity 
to positive infinity. We could also say all real numbers. The ranges instead of all possible outputs, or in this case, all possible function values, which we already discussed, notice how the function values approach zero to the left and increase without bound to the right, which means the range is the open interval from zero to infinity. The range or the outputs will never be zero and also never be negative. And again, that's because two raised to the power of x plus one will approach zero as x decreases, but it will never reach zero and never be negative, and therefore three times two raised to the power of x plus one will always be in the open interval from zero to infinity. I hope you found this helpful.